Imagine being ridiculed on a regular basis, laughed at, chased, beaten. That is the reality many transgender people face, and in some cases they are killed simply for being who they are. Tonight we continue our exclusive series on Danica Rain, the transgender woman from Toronto who flew to Thailand for gender confirmation surgery and found an unexpected sisterhood. Miss Israel. Miss Brazil. Miss Australia. Hi. You would never know they were born men. Each one is a trans beauty pageant winner. Each one has had gender confirmation surgery. In a brilliant marketing move, the Kamal Clinic in Bangkok offers it for free every year to the winners. Like 22-year-old Natalie de Oliveira. Miss Trans Brazil, who had the surgery just five days ago. Nothing can uh, explain it, how happy you feel. Um, you yeah. can tell her. I feel exactly the same way. Ela diz que ela ela se sente da mesma forma, da mesma maneira. This is the accepting world Danica has discovered at the clinic just two days before her own surgery. This is my dream. This is your dream. Believe in you. What is striking is the bond the transgender women are forming here. There's an almost instant recognition of a common history and struggle. The one thing that I'm hearing the most from them, though, is their desire longing really to be accepted by society. This is your moment. Yes, this is my moment. The moment you wake up and you will see dream come true. Andrea Jacka Smith, Miss Trans Australia, had the surgery in July. She's been married to a man for almost two years. Everyone has been so kind. They call themselves trans sisters. To truly understand this sisterhood, consider what they face at home. <laughs> Brazil, where Natalie lives, is ranked as the world's deadliest place for gay and transgender people, with an estimated 1,600 murdered in the past four and a half years. In some states, in Natalie's Australia, gay panic can still be used as a legal defense for murder if the victim made a pass at their killer. Look at her Facebook post November 30th. Sometimes I smile to hide sadness. Transgender life. I think everyone faces discriminations. I, I experienced that, but it's normal. That gay panic defense, by the way, can be used here in Canada as well. They all live with the fear they will be attacked for who they are. It's happened to Danica, even in her own home. Some people broke into my apartment to beat me up. It is not just trans beauty queens who make up this club at the clinic. There are so many others, each with a fascinating story. Meet Divi Devandre, who is in her 70s and completing her transition from male to female. Her surgery is tomorrow. I've arrived at the time of my life that I've stopped lying and uh, uh, I've become who I am. It's, uh, it's been a long journey to get here. Coming out as the trans kid? Oh, God, no. And then there's 21-year-old Kai Boggart, who is transitioning from female to male. Two years ago, his story went viral when his mother put a tongue-in-cheek retraction notice in the birth section, saying, in 1995, we announced the arrival of our Sprogget as our daughter. He informs us we were mistaken. Oops, our bad. Yesterday, Kai had a double mastectomy. I saw my breasts as tumours, benign, obviously, because I, they weren't cancerous, but I saw them as tumours, lumps that shouldn't be there. Now, there is so much more to tell you about Kai mm -hmm. and Divi. They were absolutely fascinating. So I wrote up stories, individual stories, on each of them with video, and that's on citynews.ca, and you can find it there. You know, what uh, occurred to me here is that they travel so far to Thailand without a lot of family support or maybe with even no support, but they mm -hmm. find the bond within each other. And I guess after you're going through this life-altering surgery, that bond is so important. And they felt so safe there. So when I was talking to each of them, I really noticed that they, they wanted to talk. They wanted to tell their stories. And I truly believe it's because it's the safest they've ever felt in such a warm and nurturing environment. The problem is then they go home to mm -hmm. an environment that's not as friendly to them. I was speaking on the phone with Kai just mm -hmm. the other day via Facebook, and he was telling me, you know, it, it's kind of hard to come home. I miss these people. I miss that warmth and nurturing environment. All right. Thank you, Sid.